Hey fellas, Key here from Kegland and talking to you about our temp controller boxes. Now we've been selling these for quite a while now and a lot of people probably aren't aware that there's a distilling function. I know a lot of people use these for, for instance, converting a freezer into a fridge, as a keg fridge for instance, or a lot of people use them for, uh, you know, plugging for instance a heating belt in the back or something like a, a heating wrap. And then on the cool side, they may plug in a fridge or something like that. So you can actually put your fermenter inside a fridge to temperature control the entire fermenter. I mean, ultimately, if you really want to look after your fermentation, you gotta have heating and cooling, and you gotta be hitting those ta target temperatures right on the dot. So I'd highly recommend anyone to have some type of temperature controller on your fermenter for sure. But a particular feature I wanna talk about today was actually how to use these in distilling because a lot of people don't really know about it. And the few people we do have know about it, they still have a question on how to set it up properly. So we're just gonna go over that. Uh, you'll probably notice that also the new temp controllers that we have, we've specifically made the probe a little bit smaller so it fits actually into the thermo well in the side of our reflux and the pot still. Now, I guess the reason why you'd want to do this is, uh, you know, reflux uh, distilling and pot distilling for that matter, they often take quite a while. You can sort of, uh, you know, to do, let's say, a 30 or a 60 litre batch, for instance, if you've got the Brazilla 65 or Digiboil 65, uh, can, you can be there for, uh, you know, many hours, like, for instance, five or six hours for, uh, you know, a double batch would not be considered unusual. Now, that is a long time to sit there you know, looking at a thermometer sticking out the, out the side of the still and when the temperature goes up by a little bit, you have to then, you know, shut everything down. And more often than not, most people will forget or they go have a bit of toast or read the paper or something like that and come back and a second later they're going, oh, whoops, gone too far. Now I have to start the whole process again and there's nothing worse in distilling than doing that. So, um, yeah, the distillation mode in the software of this device can avoid that being a problem for you. Alrighty, now the first thing we have to do is put the controller itself into distillation mode. So to do that, we keep the finger down on the set button. So we press and hold that for about six seconds. So it'll flash a few times. Then when we see E3, we know we're in the function settings. Now we're gonna hit the set button a few more times and scroll through to the D1 setting. Now this is a particular setting for distillation. Yeah, so D1, there we go. Then we hit the arrow key and the default zero, zero, but we're gonna change that to zero, two, like that. So now that's set, we basically, we can just leave it and we'll cycle back to the home screen, but if you're impatient, you just press the X button, and now we've put the controller itself into distillation mode. Now once you've got the controller in distillation mode, you get the probe and put it into the thermo well of the still just like that. Um, then what you do is go on the controller and you would set the actual set point. Now I've got just got 30 degrees here. Now obviously for distillation, you're gonna probably be setting quite a bit higher than that. You're gonna be setting 60, 70 or 80 degrees for instance. But yeah, for this demonstration, I'm gonna just leave it at 30 degrees and you can see what, what'll happen. If I was to not put the controller in distillation mode, you would normally have the problem that what would happen is you would have the, uh, the still go up to a certain temperature, and then if you had your heating plugged into the back here, so your boiler for instance, or your Digiboil, or Robobrew, or Brewzilla plugged into the back here, what would happen is it would uh, turn that, uh, that, that unit off once it reached temperature. However, as the boiler would cool down, or as the still head would cool down, it would then cycle, the controller would then cycle the elements back on again and pump back up again. So it'd constantly be going up and down and up and down and up and down. And that's not really what we want to happen. What we want to do when we're distilling is get up to a specific temperature and then completely shut the whole process down. Another thing you can do, if you're cycling cold water through the cold water input and output, so through the condenser, if you're, if you're cycling cold water through here using a electric pump, uh, you can also put a double adapter on the back of the controller so you have your pump and your heating element plugged in. That way it not just only turns off the whole boiler but it turns off the actual pump and coolant for, for the head as well to save yourself a bit of power. Um, so that makes the whole stills really easy. Literally all you have to do is take off the heads, um, get up to your distillation point and then you can basically you know, leave it to run and it'll completely sh shut itself down after it's done. So I'll give you a bit of a demo. I've got a little LED light here. So I'm gonna plug that in the back so you can see that the uh, relay's definitely turned on. Hope that's not too bright in your face there. Maybe I'll just face it away a little bit like that. Um, then the other thing is I'm gonna pull the probe out of here and I'm gonna simulate the temperature getting warmer in here so you can see what's gonna happen. I'm basically gonna go like that. And as the temperature increases on the display, because this is hot water, see how it's just turned off? 
And if I pull this back out again like that, this is gonna start cooling down. And yep, see how it's cooling down? Now normally, actually, this would have this would have told the element, or in this case, the light, to turn back on again. So as I was saying, I'm gonna turn it back on and heat back up. Uh, but it hasn't done that. What's happened now is it's completely turned the whole process off, and then the box itself will have that sound, alarm sound until you come and physically turn everything off. If you need to reset this device for any reason, you can just power cycle it. So pull the power cord out for the temp control box like that, and then plug it back in and then you can restart the whole distillation process again. So that's how to use it, hope you enjoy it. Uh, look, uh, definitely for distillation, I think this type of thing is a real must. I think it's fantastic and saves yourself uh, definitely overshooting those temperatures. And then unfortunately, yeah, getting stuff into, getting some of those tails into your uh, good quality collected spirit is such an annoying thing. So hopefully it saves you a lot of time and a lot of frustration with that. See you later guys. If you wanna hear about any of the new stuff we've got, definitely sign up to our Facebook page or subscribe to our YouTube channel, just in the bottom right hand corner there. All right, see you guys, bye.